what is love no matter what generation we were born into we've all had iterations we've captivated towards to to teach us what it means mine being spider-man 2 the perks of being a wallflower and wait for it wait for it wait for it 500 days of summer hey 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 leave me alone okay i like what i like all right i like what i like what is love is it sharing your pain is it taking care of someone you know you can never have or it is a fantasy we all choose to indulge in because we're afraid of being alone that was a little melodramatic but hey okay all right i'm enjoying myself you know i wrote an essay and i want to enjoy this so today we're talking about thematic false illusions of love so just sit back and enjoy the ride you are alive and you stand up and see the lights on the buildings and everything that makes you wonder and you're listening to that song on that drive with the people who you love the most in this world and in this moment i swear we are infinite the love story between charlie and sam is complicated they both suffer from sexual trauma at a young age and trauma changes people the decisions we make the people we choose to love we often form these counterproductive machinations that allow us to continue to be unhappy mr anderson an english teacher played by paul rudd in this movie says it the best we accept the love we think we deserve and when Sam and Charlie finally share their pain with each other, they fill the hole left by trauma with the newfound solace of each other. As Sam served as a momentary motivation and eventual fascination for Charlie, Charlie sees her as everything he wants to be. Free. Charlie fell in love with this idea of her that was perfect, but it wasn't her. Sam is an outgoing, energetic, social, and also slightly manipulative, confused, and has a serious lack of emotional intelligence while these traits may be a manifestation of her past trauma to overlook traits like these is irresponsible but that's what love does to you charlie became captivated with an unstable relationship with an illusion a quote from and please forgive me if i mess up your name a quote from sue thole says emotional independence is the opposite of emotional strength we look to others for our happiness and our concept of self and our emotional well-being. Such vulnerability necessitates a search for and dependence on outer support for a sense of our own worth. End quote. In this love story, trauma serves as a connection in which we can connect with them. The major misconception of this love is the acceptance of emotional dependence. Quote, you can't put everyone's life ahead of yours and to think that counts as love. End quote. One of the worst pains in the world is loving someone you know you can never have. Mary Jane and Peter follow a very morbid love story where the theme of being unhappy has been romanticized. This mental and physical obligation Peter has as Spider-Man worked as the catalyst for the main conflict in his relationship with Mary Jane. And just about everything else too. Peter is the agent of his own emotional demise. Mary Jane, in contrast, is the agent of her own emotional uprise. Both stay in a perpetual state of magnetism to each other. This connection poisons them and even dilutes what connection they had. MJ feels like an alien on Peter's earth. Ironically, she finds comfort on the moon. When Peter finally decides that he can be happy, it's at the expense of Mary Jane. Peter, in his confusion, confused Mary Jane. Goffman's theory for interaction in society argues that the main purpose of individuals is to manipulate the impressions that others form about them. Individuals, when they are acting on a stage, employ unconsciously different fronts. This misconception in their love is the oversight of toxic delusion, in which neither can be happy. The love between Peter and Mary Jane complicates itself but ultimately becomes simple when Mary Jane finds out that Peter is Spider-Man. The metaphorical wall in between them shattered. Many of us found this cathartic. Peter is finally being seen. 500 Days of Summer is a deeply intelligent film. Tom and Summer's love is an experiment. The optimist and the pessimist. The hopeful romantic and the casual fleeing. 
Summer has a traumatic past experience with love that leads to a positive future, while Tom has a fascination with the idea of love that leads to a traumatic future. The fall of their relationship is deeply about expectation. Quote, you are most powerful when you are most silent. People never expect silence. They expect words, motion, defense, offense, back and forth. They expect to leap into the fray. They're ready, fist up, words hanging, leaping from their mouths. Silence? No. Summer left Tom. He was left with silence. We often hate to be left alone because of the negative machinations our brains can captivate towards to when we're alone. His false expectations of love conspired against him. Summer once didn't believe in love. We live in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Might as well have fun while we can and save the serious stuff for later. There's no such thing as love, it's fantasy. Then one day she woke up and just knew. Yeah, so I know this is a very different type of video and I wanted to honestly just talk about like just the misconceptions of love through movies and i feel like movies are a huge thing for me and i enjoy them and i actually read into them the perks of the wall the perks of the perks of being a wallflower spider-man 2 and even 500 days of summer they worked as a reference point for me i could really see myself in some of those characters whether that's for the better or not and i could relate to them I could relate to the struggles of Charlie, I could relate to the struggles of Peter, I could relate to the ideals of Summer. And I hope, I really hope you liked this video because I really put my all into this. I want to say thank you, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, remember to be great. Peace.